All right, so we are going to set up a GIS for Moffett Airfield. So we're going to give you a 10 minute crash course on what GIS is and what we're trying to do, and then I'm going to show you how to do some of it in the software. QGIS is a really cool little open source GIS program. The commercial software that everybody uses is called ArcGIS. Mm -hmm. They used to have it and then they took my license away. So this is what we're going to use. Okay, so the GIS is basically like a smart map. Geographical information system. Okay, it's an intelligent map, Elena. So what that means is you have points and lines like you do in AutoCAD, but when you click on them, there's data associated and then you can do stuff with that data, okay? So, let's talk about what we're trying to do. So, it doesn't make sense to have a GIS for every little project we do, okay? So, GIS really only becomes cost-effective at scale. In other words, if you're just building a 7-Eleven, you don't need a GIS for that normally. So, why does it make sense to do a GIS at Moffett Airfield and not for Matilda because, Avenue? Because there's multiple locations and multiple yeah. projects going yeah. on in one multiple area. Multiple projects going on, we'll be there for 20 years. Yeah. And you're also dealing with multiple entities, not just one entity. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be, we've been at Moffett Airfield for a long time and we're going to be there a long time. It's almost like, we're almost like a city or county government almost in that sense. Okay, because we're building a bunch, we're building and helping the client maintain a bunch of infrastructure at Moffett Airfield. Okay, so one of the challenges we have right now at Moffett Airfield is we don't know half of what we've already surveyed. We got different people in different offices on different teams working on different projects. Half the time, the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. So my boss said, get this organized. Like, we ought to be able to pull a map up and see a dot for every project we've ever done at Moffett Airfield. Okay? You can't do that right now. Nobody knows. That information is in a bunch of different silos. Okay? You with me still? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. So there's going to be two parts of this. And we're just going to show you the first part. We're just going to talk about the first part today and then... You guys are going to work with me on the second part later this week, I hope. Okay, so in our GIS, there's going to be two parts. Okay, there's going to be what I'm going to call the survey tracker. Okay, and then over here, we're going to have what surveyors call the land net. That's what Caltrans calls it. GIS people call this the parcel fabric. So these two things may run in the same, I haven't decided yet, if we're going to keep them in the same project file, we, pro, we I don't know yet, we'll see. They may be in the same project file or they may be different, but they will, the data sets will definitely be able to mesh. Okay, so let's talk about the layers that we're going to have in each one of these. Okay, so just, I'm going to keep this side very simple because we're not getting super in depth in it, but we're going to have a property corner layer, we're going to have a layer for property corner monuments because those aren't the same thing, right? You can have a property corner without a monument and you can have a property corner that's been marked by multiple monuments over its lifetime. Okay, then we're going to have what we call a fee, fee parcels. Okay. Then we're going to have easement parcels. We're going to have lease parcels. have one more layer called boundary surveys. OK, 
Okay, so on this side, we're going to have survey control monument, survey control mons, and we're going to have control surveys. surveys. Then we're going to have aerial surveys. We're going to have the base. about this until we work on it. So let's just talk about this side. So the goal, what we want is we want to be able to pull up a view, a view of Moffett Airfield, and we want to we want to either have a dot or a polygon. The scale we're working, we're probably going to do a polygon. We're going to have a polygon everywhere we've done a control survey, a topo survey, or an aerial survey. Okay, and those will be color coded. And you'll be able to click on the polygon and it'll pull you up a job number and a path on our network folder to where you can go get the survey. Okay? And then we're going to have that laid on a base photography layer. Okay? And then we're also going to have points that show all the survey control mods out there. Okay? This will be color coded by status probably. So existing or destroyed. Right? And we'll use a different symbol for a horizontal versus benchmark. Right? So you'll be able to pull that up and see the primary control and then also all the other little control that we've set as we've done work out there. Okay? So I'm going to show you, we're going to really quickly do, we're going to add the base photography and then I'll probably add a couple control surveys just to show you guys how, how we do it. You cannot let me stay in here past 250. Okay? Because you because you got to go and I got to do the field community at 3. What time you got there, Matt? It is 2.31. Okay, so we got 20 minutes. So we're going to see what we can do here in 20 minutes. Oh, Elaine is not going to like that crooked camera stuff. Let's see here. All right. So anytime anybody's going to want to know about the survey that we've done out of Moffett Field, they're going to be able to open this and get all that data. That's the goal. And we're going to share this with the other offices, right? And the other offices have also shared with me some work that they've done adjacent to Moffett Airfield that'll go in here too because maybe we surveyed something right next door, right? Okay. So, let's see how we do this. What about any engineering we've done there? I haven't been asked to do that yet, but you could do that in theory. You could link to the improvement plans, yeah. Okay, so, this is QGIS, but before we go crazy there, we, we need to set up a little we need to set up a folder for our stuff. So, come into my share, land in, templates and standards, GIS. I'm going to grab this template. Okay, we don't want to put this in a job number. Why not? Because it's not a job, it's an yeah. internal. It's, it's bigger than one job, right? Uh -huh. So, where we're going to put this is we're going to go into share, land in, and I have. Right here, Moffat GIS, I already have it. I already set this up. Okay, so we don't need to copy because I already have it. Sorry. Okay, so we're going to come into QGIS. The very first thing we want to do is save a project. So we're going to come up here, we're going to say project, save as, and we're going to go back down to that folder. folder, new folder, I'm going to call 
with software files. Okay, and we'll put the date on this. And I'm going to call it. Survey tracker. Okay, we'll call the other one LandNet probably. Okay. So that's just the that's just the project uh, just the project file. There's nothing in it. It's empty. It's a shell. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set up our coordinate system. Okay. So I'm going to go to project properties. You guys have to bear with me. I don't use this every day, so I'm going to stumble around a little bit. Okay. And right here, we're going to call this. MFA survey tracker. Okay, and CRS coordinates ref coordinate reference system. And we want if I type NAT 83 in here. Okay, that brings up my state plane, and we want California zone three yep. right here. Except I don't that doesn't I don't I want just the generic California zone three. Okay, I'm going to say apply. Okay, so we set our coordinate system. Okay, now this is what's really cool. I'm going to come over here to plugins. We're going to say manage. So QGS comes with all kinds of plugins that third third parties make tools that plug into this software. Okay, and we want to get one. I think it's is it called Base Map? Quick Map Services right here. I just learned about this not too long ago. Is that like a geolocation? Yes. You need a nap, dude. Super bad. Okay, so it's in there now. Now we should be able to go to plugins. No, where is it? Quick map services. Okay, I'm going to say I want. Okay, so this allows us to quickly display a map. Okay, here's the airfield. Okay, and I don't know why, but it doesn't look like our coordinates are displaying properly. That's a little funky. Let's just check this again. Yeah, see, no, nope. it's like it didn't set apply. Maybe I forgot to hit apply. Now it's state plane. Okay, so you could actually come in here and drop drop dots on here, and they'd be in state plane. Okay, okay, but there is a better there's a better view. I got a like a Esri topo map in here. Oh, here we go. Let's try. It might have. Oh, there we go. Esri. National Geographic topo maps. Let's see how that looks. God, that's kind of ugly, huh? Mm -hmm. How about Esri Standard? Let's try that one. That's a little better, huh? And so you don't have to delete those layers, you can just turn them off. You can turn them on, off and on. Yep. Okay, so they probably have a they probably have a aerial layer on here, Esri World Imagery. Mm -hmm. Let's try that one. Okay. 
So not too shabby, huh, for the first five minutes? Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to save our project. So now when we open it, it will automatically open up the state plane and load these layers. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create a layer for control surveys and we're going to add a couple. Okay, so we're going to say layer, create a layer, and we want a new, okay, we're going to use what's called geo package. Okay, and I'm, I'm not going to get into all the details there, but it's a new file format. It's a little better, it's better than shape file. So geo package. Okay, and it says, where do you want to put your layer? You got to tell it where to put your database. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down to K, share, land in, oddball projects, GIS. Okay, now I'm going to come in here and make a new task. Okay, so, and this is just how I like to organize my projects. There's a different way to do it, but I'm going to say, so this task is going to be create initial control survey layer so that's what we're doing right and then I'm gonna come in here and say I'm gonna save this layer in here okay control okay so all I did there was tell it put your data right here okay Okay, and it says, what kind of geometry do you want, Landon? We're going to go with polygon. Okay, I don't need Zs. I don't need any elevations. This is stationing. We don't need stationing. It says, hey, what's your map projection? It automatically pulls it from the project, State Plane Zone 3. That's good. Okay, and it says, do you want any fields in there? Sure, I do. I want the job number. I'm going to say job number and dash. I obviously can't spell. Okay, that is going to be text, and okay, then we're going to put um, job name, text, okay, and I'm going to say survey type, and that'll be text too. Okay, and we're going to say, all right, create it. It says, hey, are you sure you want state plane? Yep, I'm sure. Okay, so now we have an empty layer. There's nothing in this, right? So if you come over here and right click on this and say open the attribute table, there's nothing in here yet because we don't have any data. So we're gonna create our first polygon, okay? Wake up everybody. Oh, look at you people falling asleep during my class. Dang, all right. <laughs> Elena jumped about two inches. <laughs> All right, so let's make a polygon. You're almost done. We got ten more minutes. Okay, so we gotta. So you gotta make the layer editable. So we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna say toggle editing. Now it's editable. Okay, and that made some other options available. Okay, mm -hmm. so right here it says add polygon. That's what we want to do. Okay, and I know that I've done a survey over here. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna draw my survey that I did. Now, does this need to be perfect? No, it's just an index, right? We're just trying to get a guy close so he can go find the data he wants, right? All right. Okay, so it says this this right here, FID, is the feature ID that just auto-generates. Now it's saying, hey, do you want to put in some numbers for your data? Yeah, I do. So this is job number 11002031. And the job name is Orion Park. ELU lease parcel. Okay, and the survey type on this one is going to be horizontal and vertical. We did both. Okay, and I'm going to say static GPS. That's how we did it. Okay, and we're going to say okay. That's cool. Okay, now we've got a survey here. Okay, now I'm going to do one more and then we are going to. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do one more thing and I'm going to let you get out of here. So, I also did a survey over here. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and add another one. Okay. Job number on this one, 11020. Up. This is 131, the other one's 136. Okay. 
Okay. Job name. This is CRC Mountain View Housing. Lease. Parcel. Okay. And we did horizontal and vertical static GPS. Okay, now we want to go ahead and save this project and we're going to say toggle editing, turn editing off. Do you want to save the changes? Yes. Okay, now those changes are saved out to that file. Okay, and I'm going to show you one other thing and we're going to let Elena go home. So now I'm going to come in here to this layer that we made and I'm going to say I'm old so I'm having a hard time finding it. Styles. Edit symbol. Okay. You're going to make that transparent? Yeah, so first of all, I hate this horrible, ugly green. I like that green better. And it should let me. Red, green, blue, opacity. Okay, so now you can see a little bit of the background. There's one other thing I wanted to show you guys, though. Oh, you got to go to properties. You pull up properties, right here is labels, okay? And right now it says no label. I want a single label, okay? What do I want to label? I want to label the job number, okay? And it lets you pick your size and all that other good stuff here. I probably don't want shell, whatever, whatever. So here at BKF, we like to use Sago UI. And I'm gonna say, I'm old, so is Matt. We're gonna make that size 12. Yep. We're gonna hit apply. Okay. Sweet. There you go. Okay. Now, if you come up here and click on the little identify tool, which right, I can't right, find, right, right, right. you see it? Thank you, sir. It pulls up all your data right here. Okay. And event, we don't have it yet, but we're going to make a little link in here. When you click on this, it's going to pull up a PDF of the control survey. The field drawing. It's going to pull up the field drawing. Boom. There it is coordinate system information, control points, all the stuff you want, right? Okay, so imagine now if we had something like this for the whole Bay Area, how cool would that be? It would be cool, right? But we're not going to do the whole, only oh, was like, cool, I don't know about cool. <laughs> Anyways, we're not going to do the whole Bay Area, we're only going to do Moffett Airfield. It's very okay? cool. So it's just a way to help you keep your data organized. So... Okay, so I've got like two or three other surveys that I need to add here, control surveys. So what if you did two types, two different kind of surveys in the same area? Okay, so they'll just overlap, right? And I haven't showed you guys this yet, but we can also color code these polygons. If it's a if it's a vertical only or a horizontal only, you can color code that. Probably everything we have out here is going to be both horizontal and vertical. Okay, now I messed up on that one. I messed up on that one job number, so I'm going to toggle the editing back on, and I'm going to say open attribute table. This is the wrong number. It's 36. Okay, I'm going to say save those edits, toggle the editing back off, the job number is updated. Okay. Alright, so we'll do some more of this tomorrow, huh? So tomorrow, we'll come in, I've got one more survey to add, we'll add that survey. I'm going to show you how to add a control monument, and then we'll probably let Elena, if she has time on Friday, can come in and add all the control monuments and add the data. Okay. There you go. Got your GIS analyst now. Sweet. All right. Cool. Go home. I gotta go do the field meeting. You can go home. You too. No. Stay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. See you tomorrow, kid, huh? Yeah. Well, I still got time. Yeah. What time is it? Oh man. Do your time sheet then, I guess. Two <laughs> forty-seven. Oh. Okay. You need some caffeine pills, Padilla. You know what you need to do? Ten push-ups. Oh. Get your blood flowing. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs>